Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're covering Chapter 2 here, which I'm calling Matrix Algebra, and it's just that portion of the playlist that we're covering. So let me jump to our current topic here, and it's linearly dependent and independent vectors. So we have a set of vectors, A1, A2, through AN. And they're said to be linearly dependent if there exists a vector C that's not zero, so that this, this matrix product is zero. So that's saying that we can take a linear combination of the vectors and not all the C's are zero, and it equals zero. Then they're linearly dependent. Now, if the only solution here is that when all the C's are zero, which is what this says, the vector C is the vector zero, then they're linearly independent. So we have a few two matrices here, A and B, and we want to find are the columns linearly independent or dependent. Now this first one is, I think, kind of easy. If you take the first column times two, it equals the second column. So this first, the second column is a linear combination of the first column. You know, it's times two. So these vectors are dependent. Now this one is not as easy to tell whether there's a linear combination of these that that creates that zero matrix or one of the vectors is a linear, you know, one of the columns is a linear combination of the others. And so I, this one is nice because, well, it's not straightforward, but that's what computers are for to help us with this. Now for A, this vector, this the C here, if it's two and minus one, produces this zero vector. So it tells us that that is the the columns are linearly dependent. Now for this matrix B, if we use this as C, then this matrix product creates a vector of zeros. So these columns are linearly dependent. Okay, so thus the columns of both A and B are linearly de dependent. Now, really, the important part of this is that at least one column in these matrices can be written as a linear combination of the other columns in the matrix. That is the absolute critical point here. Now, the rank of a matrix is defined as the number of linearly independent columns of A or it's the number of linearly independent rows. It actually, that's the same, ends up being the same number. Even though the matrix is not square, this is two by three, three by two, but the number of independent rows and number of independent columns is the same. That's what this is telling us. And if we, so the rank of the matrix A above is one, right? There's one independent, and this one's dependent upon that. The rank of this matrix is two. It says that two of these columns are independent, but the third one can be written as a linear combination of the others. That's what the rank stands for. Now, let A be an N by P matrix like these. So in this one, N is three and P is two. In this one, N is two and P is three. Now the rank cannot be more than the minimum of those. So if you look at this matrix, it's n is 2 and p is 3. So the biggest the rank can be is 2. You know, it could be 1, but in this case it is 2. And here it's a 3 by 2, and but the rank is 1, so it's neither of those. This is just saying the maximum it can be is the whatever's the smaller of n and p. Now, if the rank is equal to n or equal to p, then we call it a full rank. Now, I me personally, I like to either call it full column rank or full row rank, depending upon what it is. So this matrix B up here is full row rank, right? It equals two, which is the N. And here, this is not full rank. It's not full column rank, full row rank. It just has a rank of one. Now the rank of A is equal to the rank of the transpose. And to do this in R, we make use of uh, what's called the DR composition, which we won't cover, is we have a matrix A and a matrix B. QRA 
and then we tell it just output the rank. So the rank of A is one and the rank of B is two. Now the inverse of a matrix. So first of all, the matrix has to be square n by n um, and it's full rank. And since it's n by n, it's full column rank and full row rank. That's what I call a full rank matrix. Then A is what's called non-singular, which means it's invertible and has a unique inverse, which we'll call A um, raised to the you know inverse, minus 1. It's just called A inverse is how we'll say that. So the matrix product, A inverse A, produces the identity matrix. But it, and it's also the other way. A, A inverse, produces the identity matrix. Now some properties that we'll, we'll have is the inverse of the inverse is the original matrix back. Um, if the inverse of a matrix exists, then the transpose, the inverse of the transpose exists. That's a nice property. And here the transpose and inverses can be uh, switched and we get the same matrix. If we have two matrices that are non-singular matrices, oh, once you see non-singular, you know that these are invertible. So an A inverse exists and a B inverse exists. Then the matrix product A times B is non-singular and it can be found as this. So A, B inverse is thought of as B inverse, A inverse. Now, no, this is the, kind of the way I think of that inverse goes into B and then that's switched to the front, then it goes into A and it's switched to the back. It's there. Now, these next two properties, we're not really going to cover in this video, but when they come up in, in later lectures, we'll cover them in much more detail. So if we have a symmetric non-singular matrix A and we partition it, then this is the inverse of it. Now, I'm going to point you, So, and this B, of course, is this matrix, or uh, this calculation. If you want more now, I have a video called Inverse of a Partition Matrix in, in one of my playlists. I think the matrix playlist, if you want more detail on this. And also, if we have a non-singular matrix of the form B plus, and these are vectors, so it's the vector product. And the way that this does, it creates a matrix that can be added to B. Uh, B is non-singular, and um, then the inverse of this crazy matrix, B plus C, C transpose inverse, can be written in this formula right here. And again, we're not, we'll cover it in more detail in la at a later lecture, but if you want to have more on it now, I have a video called Woodbury Matrix Identity and the Sherman-Morris Formula. Now, this is the Sherman-Morris Formula. And it's a specific case of this Woodbury matrix identity. Anyway, if you're interested, you can go there. Otherwise, you'll have to wait to a later lecture. Now, how do we do these in R? So we have a matrix A and a matrix B. First of all, we have to see if they're full rank. So the A is rank 3. It's a 3 by 3 matrix, so it's full column rank, full row rank. We just say it's full rank. B, it has a rank of 3, so it's full rank. Now, to find the inverse of a matrix, we use the command solve. So solve A creates A inverse right here. And this is it. This is A inverse. This was A. This is A inverse. B inverse is this matrix. Now, the interesting, you know, one of the things with computers is there's always rounding error. So if we take A inverse matrix product A, it should be the identity matrix. But look what we get. That doesn't look like the identity matrix. Remember, the identity matrix is a diagonal matrix with ones down the diagonal. But if we look closer, look, this is a one. This is a one. This is a one. So it has ones down the diagonal. And this is zero and this is zero. But look at this. This is 2.7 uh, e to the minus 17. So that means there's 17 or 16 zeros in front of this. Same here, here. Those are incredibly close to zero. So this is essentially the identity matrix. And, and that's one of the downsides of rounding in computers. 
Well, R has a function called zap small that kind of looks at the overall uh, results. And if it's really, really close to zero, it just puts in zero. So A inverse times A is the identity. And A times A inverse is the identity. Now, if we look at property one, the, uh, the inverse of the inverse of A is equal to A. And that's true. Remember the all equal function evaluates every component and if they're all true it comes back true this is property three so the inverse of a transpose is equal to the transpose of the inverse and that's true property four is the inverse of a times b is equal to the inverse of b times inverse of a and that's true okay well it's that's all i have for this video hopefully you enjoyed that i sure did Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.